Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working over on my hydraulic press uh, rebuild that I'm working on. I picked up a Roger 60 ton hydraulic press uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we had a little work weekend out here a couple of weeks ago also, and had a bunch of guys come in, and they really helped me out. Uh, we got the old frame of the, the press all stripped down, repainted, cleaned up. Uh, also during that work weekend, they tore down the hydraulic cylinder uh, that goes into that press. And I didn't get any real video footage of them working on that. There was a lot of things going on in the shop simultaneously and had a little couple of guys over here working on this. And uh, so, but they got this thing tore down and we need to rebuild the cylinders, bottom line. Um, and that's what we're gonna be working on today. Um, let me kind of show you a couple of things that's going on with this. This is the cylinder itself that we got out of, of the, the press. Uh, the piston that goes in it is over here. There's some springs that automatically uh, return the, the piston back up so that it, it has a, you don't have to have a double acting cylinder. Um, all of that actually wasn't in terrible shape, but uh, it, you know, while we've got everything apart, while we're working on it, you know, I want to put new seals on the, the piston. Uh, we won't take the opportunity and kind of hone this cylinder here. There are a few little burrs up in here that we felt uh, once we got it kind of taken apart. Nothing major, probably would have been fine, but hey, we got it apart, let's, uh, let's do it right. Uh, and also there's a couple of little brass pieces or bronze bushing pieces that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, machine new ones, uh, take the old ones off and kind of get all that stuff back up to snuff again because those were wear surfaces. Uh, one of the bronze pieces, we'll show it to you here in a minute, is on the on the piston, and it kind of guides it in the cylinder. And yeah, it has it's worn over time, so we want to try to take care of that. So let me uh, kind of zoom in here, show you a couple of things on this, and we will get started on seeing if we can get this cylinder rebuilt today. So first off is the cylinder itself. This has a four inch bore in it. Uh, 13 inch uh, maximum stroke or press ram travel on it uh, that you can press with. Got a hydraulic fitting up here in the top. Of course, that's where the fluid comes in. And let me just show you this real quick. So this is the piston that goes up in there. And of course your hydraulic pressure is pressing against this, uh, this piston up here and that pushes this cylinder out through the bottom. So I'm not gonna push it up in there right now because I don't have my keeper on there. But uh, that is a fairly tight fit in there with all your, your, your rings and stuff up here. I do have new um, rings. Actually got them here in the shop. I got those ordered and got the new ones in here. We're gonna replace all these. This is the brass piece on the bottom that kind of guides in here. Uh, we're actually gonna turn that off on the lathe, make a new one and put on there to make sure it's the proper size. Now. As far as the actual ram, the, you know, this is the part that's actually pressing into on the, 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 the press. This comes off the bottom of the cylinder. It's not the same size as the cylinder, but you know, that's, this is the part that's pressing. And it's smaller because there's a set of springs uh, that will return the cylinder, return the piston to the up position. Let me kind of show you how that works. So again, we have the piston up here, the ram that comes down through it. And I've kind of got this assembled, but these are two nesting springs. Uh, there's a smaller inner spring. There's a sleeve that kind of fits up over the inner spring and, and the outer spring fits up over this. And this all compresses uh, in that whole tube over there. On the bottom, you got this cap piece and uh, there's some retaining pieces in here that once this is put in there, you put the retainers in and that holds this up in the, the the tube, the cylinder over here. And the whole thing here is, is when this thing, whenever you press this, of course you're pressing against the spring, it's compressing the spring. Whenever you release the fluid, the spring will return and actually cause the, the cylinder and, or the piston to, to move back up to the top. So this kind of eliminates having to have springs on the outside of the press. All the springs are contained inside the cylinder. Uh, works real nice and tidy. Now I will note here on this bottom piece, again, there's a bronze bushing in here. This uh, kind of slides up over the, the, the ram. Let me pull that spring off. So this one fits up over this uh, ram here and kind of guides the ram through the bottom. Um, again, while I'm at it, we're gonna 
get this uh, out and uh, put a new piece of brass bronze in there, get it turned to the proper size. This has got some wear in it. Uh, again, while we got it apart, might as well do it right. So kind of see what's going on here. Um, what we need to do today is, of course, we need to hone this cylinder. I need to install the two brass pieces. We need to put the new um, uh, seals in here and basically reassemble this. Probably the biggest challenge that I foresee uh, in this whole process is going to be getting the springs compressed and getting them back in there. I got a couple of ideas on how we might do that, but uh, that's potentially going to be the biggest challenge of this whole project. So the first step I want to do today is get this thing honed out. So I've got a cylinder hone. This is more commonly used in engine rebuilding. And uh, this one is a range that when I expand it out, it will come in here and allow me to hone this cylinder out. Um, I do know that there are a few little small birds up in there. I mean, you can stick your hand in here and you can feel them. There is nothing major, probably again, not gonna affect the use, but we can get them taken out fairly easily with a hone like this. I like using these uh, stone hones like this rather than the ones with the little um, stones that are kind of on the, the wire that's got a bunch of them in there because these, the, the other style hone will not hone a cylinder parallel, uh, it's gonna, if, if you got little uh, indentions in your cylinder, like if it's wore a little groove or something in it, it's, it'll actually hone up in that. With this, the stones are long enough that it will guide over those and it will keep the cylinder uh, relatively parallel, more parallel than if you are, maybe parallel is not the right word, but it won't, it'll, it won't follow the, uh, the little scores and stuff that might be in a cylinder. Anyway, that's the reason I like using these stone ones because again, they guide over a large area. Uh, what you're trying to do with this is put a cross hatch pattern in there at about 45 degrees. So you're just gonna kind of run it in and out fairly quickly. Uh, you don't wanna sit in one spot too long. You wanna just kind of go back and forth. And it usually doesn't take a whole lot with one of these. You wanna use a little bit of lubricant in there as well. Now. This is made for engines and usually the stroke on an engine isn't as deep as this. So, you know, I can't reach to the bottom of this. Notice, you know, if I go all the way to the bottom, it's a long way in there. So I've got a little extension. Uh, this is just a little small drill chuck that's on a uh, 3 8 inch rod and that will allow me to go up in there. So let me get that tightened up and get this on a drill and we're gonna start honing the cylinder. That will allow me to go all the way up in there and then some. It's probably a little bit longer than it needs to be, but that's all right. So there's a little, uh, let me kind of get that up in here. There's a little um, plastic piece on this to let those arms expand. There we go. Now we're fully expanded in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of lubricant. In this case, I'm just going to use some WD-40. Put it up in there. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. I'm going all the way to the bottom. Back out. I can kind of see here on the end what it's looking like. And I'm probably about there. I'm just going to get a couple more strokes. All right. You get a flashlight and look up in there and see what it looks like. Yeah, that feels a lot better. I think that's probably good. So um, next thing I wanna do is I wanna get this cleaned out real good. I'm gonna do that probably off camera. I'm gonna get up there with some rags and some cleaner. And um, it's long enough my arm barely fits up in there without kind of getting stuck. So I'm gonna probably have to rig up a, something to get up in there and wipe that out real good. But we'll get that cleaned out real good. We got it honed out. 
All right, next I want to pull the seals off. So there is a uh, retaining ring that goes on here. I've got, already got that off. Then you've got uh, a steel disc that's got the, the profile of these rings. These rings are seals. Get one off here. So they're kind of V-shaped. You know, it matches the V-shape in this profile. It goes up into the next one, and these just stack on top of one another. Uh, there's three of these. And then we go to another one. This one's flat on the top, and it's made out of a different material, kind of a canvas-type material. And I'm going to go ahead and get that one pulled off as well. We're going to replace all these. I've got new ones. Um, the new ones, the material is a little bit different, but basically the same. I'm sure it's, it, it'll work fine. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and get those off. So above that, we got the brass ring on here. Uh, this is just a little piece of brass that's uh, turned and pressed up on there. I want to... I th I'm, I'm going to replace this, or at least I think I am. Um, I've got a piece of brass that we can put up on there. But before I do, I want to get some good measurements. It's stamped on this, you know, it's a four inch diameter uh, bore that we're going in. And the top of the piston is stamped 3.995. And I've been told by, uh, uh, by a guy that does hydraulic rebuilds that this brass needs to be about five thousandths smaller than the bore. Uh, I also probably need to try to mic this bore over on the cylinder just to make sure that uh, it is four inches and we haven't enlarged over the over time, but I'm pretty sure that's going to still be real close to four inches, you know, within the tolerances that this is going to be. So let me, uh, let me do some quick measuring and just kind of see where we're at. But like I said, we're probably going to replace that piece of brass, I think. All right, I'm over here measuring this and I got my micrometer out and I've made a bunch of different measurements in different places on this and it is very much measuring very uh, consistency the same measurement all the way around and it's about eight thousandths under the size of the bore there we go let me get that measurement yeah so that's measuring eight thousandths under so I talked with, uh, again, a hydraulic expert, and he tells me that this little brass piece needs to be between five and 10 thousandths smaller than the bore. It's measuring eight thousandths. Um, and upon looking at it a little bit closer, it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any major scoring or anything like that on there. I have decided, I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. I, what I was gonna do is set this up on the lathe and basically turn that piece of brass off and make a new piece and go on it but I just don't see the need. All this is doing is just kind of helping to guide uh, the piston in the cylinder and if it gets out of alignment a little bit you know it just kind of gives it something that sh this brass shouldn't score the inside of that cylinder. So um, I think it's fine so I think we're going to leave it alone. I do want to put this over in the lathe though and kind of polish the shaft down here. Uh, there are a couple of little dings in it. Again, nothing major. There's all this is doing is just going up and down inside of a, again, a brass bushing over there. Uh, so th it's it's not going to be scoring anything. This is the the piston that is up here. This is just the ram that goes down. So, but I do want to kind of you know take some of these apprentice marks out while I got it a chance to at least clean them up. I also want to down here on the bottom. Let me zoom you down there and show you that. All right, so this is the end that's actually pressing. And um, if you notice, there's a little shoulder on here that's been turned. This is designed so that you can put a piece up on here. You can see the little set screw marks in there, tighten it up on there. And you're actually pressing on a piece that fits up on this. Uh, I can, you know, I don't have any of those pieces. The catalog shows them. They're easy to make. I'm going to make some different extensions and different pieces that you put up on this ram. But over the years, They've obviously pressed directly on this and it's mushroomed out a little bit. I want to clean that up, basically get a nice good shoulder that I can uh, put a piece on here with. And also again, just some dings in here. Again, this cylinder here is just riding in a little bronze uh, bushing over there. 
that a guide bushing that's oversized, but again, I can take some emery cloth and clean this up a little bit while I have the chance. There's really not much above that, but down here on the bottom end, this is just the area that gets exposed and I'm sure that people are hammering around it or pieces are hitting it or whatever. So again, just take the chance while we got it apart to clean that up. We're gonna get that set up over in the lathe. I've got the shaft set up over here in the lathe. I've got the uh, piston in down here first. I did this on purpose because I'm gonna have to uh, re-drill the center hole on the other end. And what I've done here is got this set up on the live center. Uh, this center was in great shape, so I, I just, um, chuck this up in the four jaw chuck. I got it turning true with a dial indicator. It's running within less than a thou right now. Um, this end sh should be running true as well because it's on the original center. Uh, I will set up my steady rest down here, get it set up where it'll be on center. Then I can flip it over. We'll chuck up on this end and we'll support it with the steady rest and get our center established. And then we can, once we get the center established, we'll put the center in and we can do our turning on the end and everything like that. While I got it here though, I do want to just kind of hit this with some emery cloth and just kind of clean this up a little bit. This uh, outside here, I'm just going to barely touch it. I don't want to change the diameter very much, but I do want to just, if there's any burrs or whatever on there, knock them off and got some rust and stuff in there to get that knocked off as well. It's going to take some fine emery cloth. Gonna polish that a little bit. This diameter is, I mean, you've got the seals going up on it. It's not as critical, but uh, there was a little bit of rust in there. Now on this brass, I, I don't want to, in fact, I think I'm just going to do this. I don't want to take much off, but I want to knock any burrs off that might be on there. All right. I got my steady rest in here. And uh, again, the whole purpose of me doing this is I just wanna, I wanna get this set where it's already on the center. When you put a steady rest on a lathe, you know, you can have it high or low, depending on how, where you have your older set. I know this is running exactly true on this shaft at this height. So uh, I'm just gonna run my rollers in uh, until they just barely touch on all three sides. And that should be running true. And again, that's all I wanted to do here. So now I can um, take my shaft out, um, flip it around. I'm gonna have to re-center this on the uh, four jaw chuck. And I'm, I'm actually gonna have to take this out because my cross slide is in the way, but at least I got it set at the right height. So I get all that set up and we'll come back and we'll get the uh, center put in the end where we can uh, get it going like it needs to be. All right, again, I've got my um, part chucked up over here in the four jaw chuck. I got my dial indicator on here. It's running true. Again, less than a thou of run out in there. If there's any run out in there, it's more probably in the shaft than it is in this concentricity of the prod of the shaft here. So got the steady rest. This should still be on set on height. So now I wanna come in here and face the bottom of this and reestablish that center hole so that we can put a live center in there and run that between centers or run a center on that end. Let's uh, get that done real quick. Okay, we're gonna come in here and uh, touch off on this bottom. And I just wanna kinda Get a nice flat bottom on it to work off of. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat all the way out to the end, but uh, that'll help. And now I'm gonna come in with a center drill. Probably gonna need a bigger one, but I'm gonna start with this one. I've got just a bunch of junk up in there. It's actually cutting metal, so this might actually work. Uh, I was thinking that was full of more trash. So far, so good. Just want to get a good center reestablished where we can put that live center in there and support it on the end rather than having to use the, the steady rest. All right, I think 
think we got a center established. Again, it's not perfectly uh, flat across the bottom, but the center is really the main thing I'm after here, uh, just so that we can support that properly. Now I got my live center in here, and we can put that on there, and that will support it where we need it. We can pull the uh, steady rest out now. All right, now we can come in here and kind of clean this uh, area up that's been mushroomed. I'm just gonna come across that and clean it up. Get down to a um, probably a nominal size. Once we get it cleaned up, we'll measure it. Get a pair of calipers and just measure that. That's probably getting back to where it was originally. So I'm guessing this was originally an inch and five eighths. Uh, we are at one inch six thirty five. Uh, we're going to take it back down to six twenty five. So I'm going to take about ten more thousandths off of that. Just get it to a nominal size. We're right on 625, and uh, while I got it, I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice chamfer on that corner as well. All right, that is cleaned up pretty good. Again, my main goal is just be able to put a cap up over that, and I did kind of redefine that back shoulder while I was in there. Next step, I'm going to take some emery here and uh, see if I can kind of take some of that out. I really don't want to change the diameter much, but I do want to try to knock some of those high spots off there. So I do. So we're just going to take the emery cloth here and um, just kind of hit this a little bit. I'm not really trying to reduce the diameter. I'm not really trying to get all those marks completely out, but what I do want to do is make sure there's no raised burrs on them. You know, make sure everything, all the areas where there is a ding, that anything that's, there's nothing sticking up on the diameter. So that feels pretty good. I don't, like I said, I, nothing there is, it's just riding on a bushing. So nothing real critical on those diameters, but we do want to kind of clean them up a little bit. I think we've got this, uh, pretty well finished and ready to get the seals on and go back into the, the press. So I'm over here looking at, this is the piece that holds the spring in and it has the bronze bushing in it that guides up and down on this shaft. And I think I'm gonna leave it alone. Again, I'm talking with the, the tolerances on this. This is just a guide. Uh, it needs to have some flex in it. It doesn't need to be super tight and uh, it's, it's in spec. So I, I think we're just gonna leave it alone rather than trying to replace that, um, save a little bit of time on the project and money and bronze and everything else. So I think uh, I'm happy with how this shaft turned out. We've got it cleaned up good. I think we're ready to look at uh, getting our seals put on here and see about getting this thing put back together. This is the original stack that was in here. There was a, uh, kind of just a flat one. Then there's a couple of these that have this uh, little V shape in them. And then there's a piece in the bottom that kind of rides together and holds that all into place. Now I ordered new ones and these are the new ones. A um, little bit different material. Uh, this was kind of a fiber and this is kind of a rubber. These are all kind of a rubbery fibery mix. Um, 
but that's what you get now. I will note that, and, and they told me when I ordered these that there were gonna be some extra stacks in here and that I just wouldn't use all of them. I was gonna take two of them out. And when you look at the thickness of the entire stack, it is the same. So I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna start by putting the flat one on and that one is kind of loose. And uh, then we'll put the first uh, V-shaped ring on here. This one is a much tighter fit. Slide that one on. There's three total of, uh, of these. And again, they just kind of go right up into the other one. Do a third one here. Then there's the bottom piece. Now on the original one, this bottom piece was actually made out of steel. And I'm debating, <laughs> do I put the steel one back in there? Or do I use this uh, other one that came with it? I don't know. I just, I like the idea of that steel one in there. But it, I'm gonna need to kinda tighten them up a little bit regardless to be able to get my snap ring in there. So I need to kind of come up with something to clamp those together to kind of squeeze them in there because they're not, they, they'll, they'll, they'll tighten up I'm sure, but they're not quite where they need to be. Let me figure something out on that real quick. All right, here's what I've come up with. I decided I'm just gonna use the one that came with the new kit, but I'm gonna use this steel one here to kind of press it with. So when I put this one on, it's sticking out just a little bit. I'm gonna take a block of wood and put on here and we're gonna use a couple of clamps and just see if we can tighten that up. So um, let's see, we'll just take this little wood clamp here. And I'm gonna put one on the other side as well. Kind of sandwich those all together nice and tight and see if that'll let me hopefully they won't expand out too much when I pull this back apart hopefully it looks like they are let's see what happens here so I don't quite have room to get that snap ring in there yet but that did Pull it in a little bit tighter. I'm gonna do that again and see if we can get this uh, tightened up. All right, I'm going to some little bit more substantial clamp here that I can put a little bit more clamping pressure on. And I'm hoping that once I kind of get them compacted that they'll stay compacted. Might be wishful thinking, but we can always hope, right? Well, I can at least see the gap in there now. This is the uh, ring that goes on there. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I think, is, um, See if I can kind of put that on there. And um, as we tighten them up, maybe it'll kind of fall into that groove. We'll try that. Try squeezing them together again. see 
the groove that the uh, snap ring goes into. And when you put this uh, bottom piece on, you can tell it's just a little bit too thick. But I noticed if we use the uh, metal one that came with the original stack, I got just a little bit more room in there. I think I've changed my plan. We're going to just use it. So um, I think we can get it on here. Like this. I think so. Let me, um, I'm going to take this and it's going on. So, yeah, it's dropping in there. It's tight, but it is, uh, It's jumping right in there. It's a tight fit, but it's in there. And we use that original metal um, piece, which I kind of liked a little bit better than that fiber one that came in the new set. But um, I think we got our, I think we got it together. I think it's ready to go back into the press or into the cylinder. All right, we're gonna put a little uh, grease on this just to kind of give it some lube to go back together. Um, most of these videos and stuff that I've seen of people working on these hydraulic cylinders, they recommend putting the grease on the, on the uh, glands or on the, seals uh, just helps prevent them from getting uh, damaged as they go together helps them slide together and of course this is going to be running in oil hydraulic oil once it all gets together so a little bit of grease in there is basically a petroleum based uh, product so should go together good all right we should be ready to see if we can get this to go back into the uh, cylinder Tight bit. That feels like it's down in the bottom. We will drop our spring in there. This goes on next, and then our outer spring. And then uh, this gland on the end. And I gotta work on coming up with a way to press that down so that we can put the pieces in there to capture that in place. So the challenge is, is I, I need a press to reinstall my press, but I've got a press. I've got this Arbor press and that's what we're going to do. So I got to compress this spring down um, to get it where I can close the end off. So this cap piece kind of fits up on here, presses down, and then there are these three little clips that kind of go in and, and around this and that's what's going to hold it in place. So I've checked this out. I think I can do it over here on the Arbor Press without any problem. Let me zoom you in here where you can see what's going on and we'll get this put on. I've got the cylinder just sitting down on the floor, not on the table. I took my little daisy wheel off. I got my piece in there. And what I'm going to do is I got just a piece of tubing here. This will kind of let me press this down and let that um, piece come up in the middle. I'm just going to put a two by four on the top of this and it doesn't take a whole lot to press it down in there. Um, not near as bad as I thought it was going to be. I can actually do it with my hand wheel. I don't even have to really press it in there too hard. And there it goes. All right, 
we're going to press it on down in there. And basically these little retaining rings just kind of fit up into a groove. I probably need to go grab a screwdriver to kind of help get them where they need to be. Alright, you can see now we got the retaining ring in there and it catches on a lip up underneath the bottom and it is set home. So um, that is basically got that hydraulic cylinder rebuilt as far as I can tell. So uh, I think we're good. The spring will, like I said, return it. This is all the way retracted. Uh, when it presses out, of course, the stem will come up through this bushing in the bottom. And then whenever you release the hydraulic pressure, the springs uh, should return it back home. So there we go. I think we're all good to go. I think we got this uh, all finished up. Well, there we go. One hydraulic cylinder rebuilt, uh, ready to go back together. I'm happy with how that turned out. I do need to get it painted. Um, we got it all the, it's cleaned up. I just need to mask off this area here and what have you and put a coat of paint on it and I'd uh, be ready to mount back up over here on the press. I've got the part that it fits in back here. It's already painted. So um, yeah, making progress. And then after that, we need to work on getting a power pack on here to actually power the hydraulics. I've got a game plan put together on that. I, I have found one through a viewer and uh, should hopefully have that in the shop here before long. And uh, once we get that going, I think we'll have this thing ready ready to actually use. I hope so anyway. So there you go. That's a wrap. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big huge thank you all the supporters of the site, of the supporters who support the site financially through PayPal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, could not do everything we do without your help. And we do really, really appreciate that. And with that, guys, we will sign off and we will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.